So you got a take home project for your software developer job interview. You completed it. You're happy with it. You turned it in. Now what? Well, as you may know, completing the project is oftentimes just part one of this interview. Part two is when you get on the phone with a company or whoever's hiring you and you talk about your project, right? You discuss it, you answer questions about it, you walk them through it. So that's what this video is about. I'm gonna go over some common questions you may receive in the second part of the take home uh, project interview where you get asked about it. Now I'm an iOS developer, so some of the examples I use are gonna be in that field, but they're general enough that you can apply it if you're a web developer, game developer, Android developer, etc. Now this video is an excerpt from my iOS developer take home project course. In that course, we run through the whole process, right? I've done 15 take home projects in my career. So I created a brief, you know, based on all my experiences and we walk through the entire process. We kind of simulate it step by step and build the app. And again, this video is at the end of it where we talk about what questions you'll get after you've turned it in. For you iOS developers out there, the course is done in UI kit and all the UI is built programmatically. So if you're interested in that, check out the link in the description on to the interview questions. So now that we've taken a few passes at our project, we've optimized it, we've turned it in, let's talk about preparing you for the next steps. Because remember, like I said, building the take home project is usually part one of this interview. The second part of the interview is where they review your code and now they wanna ask you questions about your code or you'll have to come in and talk through your code, all that stuff. So let's talk about some of the typical questions uh, you may get asked or some things to prepare for for the second half of this interview. Now, of course, every company and take home project is unique, so I can't promise you this is exactly what they'll ask, but these are pretty common questions. And even if they don't ask this exact question, it may be very similar. And as long as you've thought about this stuff, uh, you should be good to go. A very common question you're probably going to get asked is, if you had more time, what would you have improved on this project? Because remember, like I said in the very beginning, they typically expect you to work on these take home projects like two to five hours, right? They don't expect you to put 20 hours into the project. They're trying to be respectful of your time. They know you're not working for them. You're just interviewing for them. So they know, again, typically two to five hours. So uh, you worked way more than that on this project, I bet, right? So that's why a typical take home project has much less functionality than what we built here. But again, the purpose of this course was educational. So we went above and beyond. So you can reference this in the future. So after turning your project in, start thinking about that. Like, man, if I had more time, what would I have done? Because this is actually a very common question. And, you know, maybe it's little features you would have added or extra UI polish or maybe an extra refactoring in your code. Oftentimes when people turn in uh, take home projects, they don't do all the full error handling that we did with like the custom alert. So maybe that's a good thing that you would have liked to have added had you had more time. And then there's cleaning up edge cases, like always mention edge cases, right? Uh, they are very impressed if as a junior developer, you're not just thinking about what they call the golden path, which means like things work perfectly if the user uses the app as intended, right? You gotta start thinking about the, the weird edge cases because that's what you spend a lot of your time as a developer is solving for those edge cases. So if you can show that you're thinking about that actively, that's a good sign. A good example of an edge case in our app specifically that could be fixed is our search functionality on our follower list VC. So say you're searching for a user and you just type like the letter D and you still have like 30 followers that have the letter D. So you can scroll down a bit. Well, now when you hit the bottom of the scroll, we're gonna bring in like the next users and reload that, but that doesn't really jive with the search. So you can see that's kind of a edge case, little bug that we didn't really consider on our first time through. So if you can point out things like that and show that you're looking for edge cases, uh, that's huge. That's a great way to answer this question, along with I would have improved the UI or I would have added proper error handling. You know, things like that are great answers to this question. Another common question you could get is, what did you struggle with most when building this project? And be absolutely honest, right? Don't say, oh, nothing, if you struggled, right? Be honest, because this is a great opportunity. Like, here's the major piece of answering this question. Talk about the struggle, but the big thing is, talk about how you overcame the struggle. Because the truth is, no matter how senior developer you are, if you're trying to build new things, there's always gonna be a struggle, and you always have to overcome that struggle. So if, as a junior developer, you can show that here's the struggle I had, here's what I did to overcome it, and here's how that all worked out. Like showing that you can already do that and think like that as a junior developer, again, that's a great sign. And the flip side of this question, which is common, is also like, what are you most proud of about this project? Now, this kind of questions typically leans towards the take home projects where you had some freedom. Remember at the very beginning, I said, sometimes you'll get an exact design you have to follow. They'll give you very rigid instructions. So in that case, 
you know, you may not get this, what are you most proud of question because you had to basically paint by numbers. Uh, however, in the case of this project where we had to come up with our own design, we had a lot of freedom. If you get a take home project like that, you're very likely to get asked like, what are you, what are you most happy with with this project? Or what are you most proud of? So like in our case, like I like the design we build. Uh, I think it's very sleek. And also I'm very happy with how we implemented Diffable Data Source, which is a powerful new API, right? I had to learn something new that not many developers have, have had a chance to play with yet. So answers like that are great to like, what are you most proud of? And another type of question you may get is they may ask, why behind your implementation, like a specific implementation, like maybe they would say, why did you choose to implement Diffable data source instead of the normal data source, right? And it's not so much that they disagree with your answer. They want to hear you talk through your reasoning, right? Because, and this is kind of a way to catch people that just like follow a tutorial, copy paste code that don't fully understand it, right? They just, they typed it and it worked. So they're like, okay, good, right? If that's what you're doing, be very, very careful with that because you could get caught. Because when they start asking, why did you do this? Like you have to know the reasoning behind why and, and kind of like how your code actually works. So my recommendation, like even with this project, take some time, go through the project and think to yourself like, why did we implement Diffable Data Source? And the reason being is because you see when we search now, the collection view updates rapidly and it's a nice animation. So that's a great reason to take the time to learn a brand new API because we got good functionality out of it. But again, take some time to review the code. Make sure you understand that the big principles that are going on, again, it's all explained uh, in the videos. And if not, check out the comments. But I guess the moral of this question is know your code, be able to walk through it and explain it, not only answer the why questions, because again, if you're just copying and pasting or blindly following the tutorial, uh, you could get exposed during the second part of the interview. And then lastly, if you have a certain style, they may ask about that style. For example, you notice like I lined up my equal signs, uh, or you may notice there's no comments anywhere in our code base, right? Uh, comments are kind of a debated topic, right? Some programmers say comment everything. Other programmers say, no, my code's self-documenting. Other programmers say, I like to comment, you know, here and there when I think it's applicable. You're going to get a wide spectrum of answers on when you should comment. So if you have a certain style, I'm not saying defend your style, like definitely talk through why you like that style. But remember, when you're interviewing for a company, you're joining a team. So I think if they question your style, don't get defensive. You know, definitely say, this is why I like that style. Here's my reasons. But also say, like, I recognize I'm joining a team. This team has a style that has set, you know, before I even joined. So of course, I'm going to conform my coding style to the style guide based on the team, because I know the code bases have to be consistent. It's easier for code reviews if everybody expects the same style. Like again, if you can rattle off the reasons why you should conform to that style and show that like, yeah, I have my own style, I like it, but I'm not too proud that I'm not gonna conform to the existing style that the team has. So those are some general questions that you're likely to get on the second part of the interview. Again, just to recap, every company, every take home project is gonna be unique. You could get asked some crazy off the wall questions, but again, here are some of the, the common general ones that you're likely to get.